Hi there, my name is Sandy Alnock. I'm an artist, paper crafter, and Bible journalist. And I wanted to share with you today some ideas and a place that I got some ideas for my Bible journaling. And that is from the 30 Days of Bible Lettering Challenge. There's a lot of different challenges, but Bible lettering seemed a little less intimidating than doing a whole page in my Bible every day, which I've done before. And I thought that would be a fun challenge. So I got a mixed media sketchbook and it's a nine by 12. So I had more room, more, more place to practice and play. And I can also use other mediums. A couple of these I did with just regular script lettering, just to see if I could get my hand lettering to a place I liked. Didn't really get thrilled with that. This one I loved though. I thought the word plans really inspired me and I went and looked up some pictures of architecture things and came up with that idea. Here's another one where I was just playing with the hand lettering idea, but here I took the hand lettering of the word freedom. I painted it in water and then dropped brusho into it and then did it a spritz so that it had that feel of fireworks. So I did enjoy that one. Here's another one that I was playing around with the design elements. I'm a graphic designer by trade, so please don't compare yourself if you don't have that training. Uh, just to compare different fonts and how they play together, that sort of thing. And this one was not as much a success as I had hoped. My in you, I didn't really plan out how far that should have started up or how small those letters should have been to make them fit. But you know, it's a sketchbook. It was all for the sake of practicing. This one I did at breakfast in a hotel with a couple kids helping. So that was kind of fun for them to pick out markers that I should use. And this one I worked on quite a bit. I really do love this verse. And I actually took this and have already transferred it into my Bible. And that's what I want to do with some of these. I, some of them I can't do because Brusho will go through the pages. So I won't be able to transfer that one. But for this one, I just did it with a black pen and, and did the basically the same thing, had to rearrange some of them, some of the words so they fit better. But practicing on something like this in a large format or in a sketchbook can be helpful. Here's another one that I drew in pencil and then painted with water and added the brush to it. This one almost had the center blank, just all the stuff that God can't do. But then I realized there are things that he can't do. He can't get tired. He can't break his promises to you. He can't stop loving you. And so I did put some of those things in there. This was another quickie. There were some days I had more time to spend on this than others. And this one was a relatively quick-ish one. And here's one that I did while I was at Yosemite because I was traveling during this time period and I was inspired by the scenes of the mountains and really felt like God was giving me some rest um, and, and his presence in the mountains while I was there. This was a day when I only had a pencil. That's all I had. Everything else was packed up in the car. I was on a road trip and a pencil and a piece of paper is sometimes all you need. You don't need all your fancy supplies. This one I did while I had my brush out and I will eventually do a video potentially on how I did this glass of coca-cola and that sort of thing but it was fun to do with brush -o. this page almost was going to be filled with little people I wanted to draw the entire page full of people because it's grace be with you all and I wanted all the people in there and I ran out of time <laughs> that's just how it goes uh, this one you know teach me your past was an obvious inspiration but it also worked to transfer this one easily into my Bible. So I took the full verse, the longer version, and what I did was I first wrote out in a black waterproof pen, I wrote all the words out so that I could get them all in there. I just kind of put them in random places and then I scribbled watercolor pencil over each one and then watercolored them so that I would watercolor them into the shapes of these these rocks. And then after it was dry, I went around each one with that pen and then added the background, the brown that is around the outside so that it made it all pop. And that gave me that contrast. And you can do this with a lot of different Bible verses that talk about this kind of an idea. But you know, getting it from this large piece of paper into a small format is just a challenge in terms of medium that you can use sometimes and, and making something that's going to work in a smaller way. This one was on one of those tragic days we've had recently. We've had way too many of those with lots of of pain and violence and it was just thinking about that piece was really important and the same with this that same time period I was doing this one and casting out that fear I, it was so satisfying to just rip that paper and cast out that fear 
that day. Here's one where I just drew it all in pencil and then went in with a black pen. Some of these days that I was traveling, all I had was my pencil and a pen out. And this was a very simple salt shaker with some lettering inside of it. Uh, another day, very quick one because I didn't have much time. So I shortened James 1.5 to really just be simply ask. Do not forget to ask. Now here's one that I wanted to do, you know, the Lord himself will fight for you. I wanted a fight poster. So I googled fight posters and penciled it all in. And it didn't look much like a poster until I added the outside background. But what I did do was first take that square in the center and I did brush out and stuff inside of that over my pencil lines. And then I went in with my black pen. After I got done, I wanted to add that brick. I just painted squares, dropped in brush out, and then moved the color around with my brush. This one seemed to call for just the word comfort and flowers, which I of course closed this before my gold dried. I put gold in the center and sort of made a mess. But I did want to write out the whole verse in this one because to me it was really important to remember that it's we can give that comfort to others because God gives it to us. It's not just part of the verse. A lot of people quote just a portion of it and the whole verse to me was really important. This one, be filled with the Holy Spirit. The earlier part of the verse talks about not getting drunk so I added the word instead, but I should have added it in a stronger color because some people missed that when they saw it. So instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. And uh, that was done all in watercolor pencil. And what I did was just do the watercolor pencil all over the whole thing. I did the lettering first and watered that and then did the background afterward. For this one, I did my lettering in pencil and then I went, wait a minute, the creation of the world, let's, let's do that kind of brush -o mass. And then I did the brush on top and then I had to redo all of my lettering because all I could see was the little lines sticking out. So I kind of ended up doing that twice. But since I did have, um, have that first blush, that first try at it, it worked pretty easily to recreate it with a white Signo pen. This one I did in Zig Clean Color Markers. I just scribbled a bunch of color on there and took a wide brush, big fat brush, lots of water and just spread it. And then once that was completely dried, then I went in and I painted the word pure, I painted the heart and all of those little dots. That lifts color. You just dab off with a paper towel and it just pulls that color up. Now it was whiter to start with, but um, after I put the glossy accents on, it got kind of yellowed. And then the A that was supposed to be in the Create In Me A, I kind of had hanging out there because I ran out of space for it. So yeah, then, the, then it bled with the glossy accents. And this one, I went around the outlines with different colors and then just painted in between them with water and let all that color just blend. And I love this. I want to find ways to use that in other things. Here, uh, put on love, you know, above all things, put on love. And I was thinking of a closet. So I just scribbled with my water-based markers, just a bunch of shapes hanging from this. And then I went around and did my black outlines afterward. Same with the boxes. I did all my coloring first, and then added the black at the end. Here's one where I was trying to see if I could do fancy letters like this, because I see other people do it, and no, that's not for me. This took me forever long to do, so don't look for me to be doing that again. Here's another one with watercolor marker, and I I basically drew the, the pencil lines in, filled it in with the green, and then I added, after it was dry, another layer of green in there to just outline a few leaves so that you'd get that whole idea of life and then watercolor that a little further on top. So I got another layer in there. And free indeed. I just thought of a bird escaping from a bird cage. So I did my lettering first uh, in my water-based markers and then went over them with water. With the, the bird cage, I was trying to create the back of the bird cage and the front. I think it's a little fussy but it is what it is and I do love all the little birds that I added the little rainbow of them flying out and this was the last one here am I send me it's not very exciting but it's just little me waving and saying hi now some of these may show up in my bible some of them may not but if you're interested in bible journaling and you want to know more about mediums that work in bibles I do have an inexpensive class on my blog there's a link in the description down below on bible journaling 
You can do it at your own pace. There's 10 lessons on all different kinds of mediums. And here are a couple other Bible journaling videos that I've done. On the left is basically a giant flip through of a lot of stuff I've done. In the center, I'm using some oil pastels with baby wipe. And on the right hand side, I'm using some watercolors and showing you how to flatten out your pages. So if you'd like to look at any of those, you can. You can hit the subscribe button or just go over to the blog. There's lots more information over there. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks so much for spending a few minutes with me.